Hello and what? Oh, you've got to be kidding. Starting off the news this week, astronomers have found evidence of what could be the first planet to be detected outside of the Milky Way galaxy. The reason that this hasn't been done before, and the reason why we're not totally sure whether or not it's been done now, is because it's impossible to detect planets that are so ridiculously far away as other galaxies by using methods that are often used to detect planets in our own galaxy, which is still incredibly hard and can be quite inaccurate, especially of course the further away you go. One method that has been used to find planets outside this solar system, exoplanets, in our own galaxy is known as the planet transit model, where a planet is detected and then analysed as it passes in front of something large enough to detect, like its own star. In this example, the team of astronomers were observing three different events in three different galaxies called X-ray binaries, which are detectable events usually caused by a star falling into a black hole or a neutron star. One of these X-ray binaries is in the galaxy M51, or the Whirlpool Galaxy. It was here that the transit was detected, and after things like gas and dust were ruled out, it was eventually concluded that the object is most likely a planet roughly the size of Saturn, the second largest planet in our own solar system. The analysis of possible orbits further supported this theory as they seem to be consistent with how such a planet would survive around a mass transfer binary. Some pretty awesome astrology news then this week in what is possibly a very historic discovery. In other news, I'd like to briefly mention that the COP26 Climate Summit will be starting this week in Glasgow. There has been an avalanche of reports and warnings from various independent, national and international agencies in the last few months and longer in anticipation of this event, and I urge you all to try and keep up to date with the goings on in as much detail as you can. We'll obviously be reporting on any particularly important stories that come out of this, but for various reasons we won't be able to cover everything in great detail, and there may even be some important stories that we have to miss. Exciting times, and best of luck to everyone in Glasgow and the surrounding area, who I'm sure will have to endure various disruptions and delays over the next week or so. And now we're over to Ben, who is actually- Thanks Doug. Also in this week's news is a brilliant paper that describes the earliest ever evidence of herding in dinosaurs. The research explains how although herding in derived sauropodomorphs, that is, the sauropods themselves, is well documented, evidence of this behaviour had not yet been found in Triassic and Early Jurassic non-sauropod sauropodomorphs. However, an Early Jurassic aged site in Patagonia is described here as preserving more than 100 eggs and 80 skeletons of various growth stages of the sauropodomorph Musaurus mostly in a small area and from the same stratigraphic horizon, with groups of individuals of similar ages clustering together in some cases. The paper therefore interprets all of this as evidence for social cohesion as well as age segregation within a herd, plus colonial nesting. This is now the oldest record we have of complex social behaviour in dinosaurs, extending the known range of such behaviours back by around 40 million years and indicating a Triassic origin for this sort of thing. An absolutely fascinating paper with so many implications for the success of sauropodomorphs as a group throughout the Mesozoic. This is truly a great discovery. And finally for this week is an amazing find of a Cretaceous aged crab discovered preserved in amber. This animal was found in the 100 to 99 million year old amber deposits in Myanmar, which is a very controversial locality due to the ongoing conflict in the area, as I explained in a video last year. But to be fair, the paper does include an ethics statement explaining that the fossil was purchased legally in 2015, before the conflict resumed in the region in 2017. Anyway, the paper explains that this is the first record of true crabs, members of the grouping Brachiura, in amber. It displays big compound eyes, as well as mouth parts and even gills are visible, and it's been interpreted as having been trapped in a brackish or freshwater environment actually helping to close the gap between the time at which non-marine crabs are predicted to have diverged based on molecular evidence, and the start of their actual fossil record, which only occurs a lot later. So another astonishing amber find, there seems to be no limits to the wonderful things that end up being preserved as fossils such as these. Back to Doug in the studio. Thank you Ben. Well that's it for this week's 7 Days of Science, I do hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you next week.